Welcome back, gang. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. We're going to look at part two of why liberal churches are failing. It's a good question. A lot of people say, are they really failing? I think we look around and go, I think they're succeeding, but not really. They are taking over more conservative churches, that's for sure. I can tell you that. A lot of churches are failing, and as they fail, they're being taken over by liberal theologians. It, but I'm going to predict, by the way, that that's going to be short-lived. I believe they're just going to eventually go away. There's not a whole lot for them to stand on. If you don't stand on the Word of God, and Jesus Christ is the infallible Word, is the truth, you are going to fall. You're going to fall as a church. People, listen, if I have a church to go, if I have an option to go to a, a liberal church or go bike go bike ride, you know, on a, in the park on Sunday or hike, man, I'm going to do that. Why would I go there to just have untruth? If I want to hang out with people, I'll go Saturday night. And listen, that's no big deal. Listen, here's the bottom line. Today's episode is, only, you know, listen, only God's people know him. The problem with liberal theology. Hey, gang, have you ever met someone who you know who hears the same biblical scripture or message that you have, but either they secularize that message, they deny it, or it's plain and simply just say they can't understand it. This is what the Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 2.14. He says this. He says, The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Whoa! They're not understand. So people cannot understand the Word of God, plain and simply, because that what they're listening to, they personally are not spiritually discerned. Well, how do, what does that mean? Well, it means if you are not in Christ and the Holy Spirit does not live in your heart, anybody can read a book. Anybody can pick the Bible up. It's a book with pages. The Holy Spirit brings the truth of God into your heart. But if you're not spiritually discerned, forget about it, forget about it, right? At the end of the day, you're going to be lost. You're going to be going in the wrong direction. But what we're seeing is really an alarming in, uh, increase in American Christians and Christian churches who claim the Bible as their authority somehow. But listen, at the end of the day, they don't even believe the Bible as the inerrant, infallible Word of God. Now, these churches preach. What do they preach? A lot of times, positive, feel-good, pluralistic uh, messages. They're the positive ones. You've probably seen that. Oh, you know, Jesus here, and I was in, and, oh, I was down, and God, you know. You know, they go on for 30 minutes, a story about them. The pastors, they'll talk about themselves. They just like to hear them talk about themselves. They're just like, they want to make themselves a mini-God. A lot of times, people will go to the liberal churches because they're so accepted. Anybody's accepted to the point that their beliefs are respected and accepted. That's called religious pluralism, saying that all religious beliefs and, true, and, and beliefs and gods and religions all lead to the same spiritual truth. And I wrote a whole book on that. You want to check that out on Amazon. It's called All Roads Don't Lead to Heaven, Discovering God in the New Age. But listen, good messages, a lot of times they'll be nice, they'll feel good, but they fail to teach truly the biblical message that God has intended, you know, that was written. It's the truth. The growing number of Christians that are gravitating towards these churches is not, not good. We're seeing that more and more. The Bible warns us in 2 Timothy 4, 3, which is happening today. It says this, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions Listen, <laughs> that's what's going on now. In other words, they want a pastor, they want people in their church who are going to affirm their liberal beliefs. Dr. Norman Geisler used to say in class when I was in seminary underneath, he used to say, you know, God made us in his image and we have been returning the favor ever since. That's what's going on here. Say, at the end of the day, our own passions want to say, we want to make God, listen, this feels good, it's Sunday, and when, when the preacher says, no, that's, that's excellent, that's great, it's whatever you want it to be, your truth is your truth. Why go to church? You can get that at home. You're in a church with a cross on top, but a lot of times they take the cross up. You go to the church and there's no crosses. There are a few good ones out there, but at the end of the day, if there's no symbolism of Christ, the crucifixion of Christ, Listen, you, you got a problem. Listen, these are folks, by the way, and churches at whole. They act in the name of God, but they fail to lead or live by the word of God. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is not a model for the church that is going to sustain them. That's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome back, folks. Today's truth is that, as Apostle Paul tells us, too many preachers today preach secular, humanistic messages with a little bit of Bible, a little itty bit sprinkled in there. And listen, and many Christians listen to them because why? Because they want to feel good. They want to feel all that little yummy tummy and the burning of my bosom as opposed to hearing the truth of God's word. And in the end, this leads only to this light, superficial Christian faith. The bottom line is, is that, listen, 
Only God's true followers can understand him. Only the sheep know the, the voice of the shepherd. And this is what I want to speak to you about today. Again, greetings, everybody. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. Welcome back to Reason for Truth, where the truth comes first and the reasons come last. There's a reason for that. But where we're always in constantly learning, because when we stop learning, we stop teaching. Same is true for you. At least stop teaching well. Here, I'm here. We're here to help you cut through culture's distorted truth. And there's lots of that out there because in our relative world, the truth doesn't change, but the human will certainly does. Never rest. Now, we cut through all this gobbledygook, this distortion of the current events and with the truth of God as an antidote, listen, for you to answer these false messages, the false messages of what? Of this sinful world. And listen, you know what I always say before I get started. Make sure before you do anything, just pause bit, smack that subscribe bell, bam, and then give the old Sicilian Goncio City Stroll, the alert bell, Give that little left hook down there. And you listen, not only be subscribed, we're going to alert you then. Hey, gear follows back on. Reason for Truth's back on. All right, let's tune in. All right, gang, let's just jump in here. Now, listen, the Apostle Paul tells us again in 1 Corinthians 2, four, uh, verses 14 to 16. Again, I want to read that again. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him. And he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually, spiritually discerned. And the spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? Good question. But we have the mind of Christ. It's you and I, right? When Paul's saying this, by when he talks about the natural person, he's speaking about an unsaved person. Verse 14, the same word is used for the natural person, by the way, and this is how we know this context, in Jude 19, which is translated worldly people. Those are non-believing people, indicating a person or persons who do not have the Spirit of God in them, who do not trust in Jesus Christ. When you trust in Jesus Christ, the Spirit enters you. That's Romans 8, 9. You read more about that. But when Paul says the spiritual person judges all things, but he himself Listen, is not is is going to be judged. It is, we're is judged by no one. The words "spiritual person" is speaking in contrast about the natural person. So the spiritual person, by nature, is the Christian. He's led, or she's led, and taught by the Spirit. A natural byproduct of being taught and led by the Spirit of God, and the true Word of God, is that one's going to be able to properly judge all things. That's what it's saying here, meaning that he or she can properly discern, scrutinize, or sift through. And be able to understand things of the world, this gobbledygook, this fog, this relativism. This is in great contrast, by the way, to the natural person who is an unbeliever, who can't do that. You ever wonder why an unbeliever will think so really illogical a lot of times? It's because they're unable to discern. They may not be a very nice person. But an unbeliever, and even, car listen, this also applies to the carnally-minded Christians, Christians that are backslidden or were Christians who are just have let sin get in and they're carnally they're to acting in their own flesh. They're just the spirit begins to you know descend their blessing and discernment and that this sin creeps in and they're unable to really appraise or understand God, the spirit of the word of God, or do so properly, certainly. But Paul uses the word but in verses 14. That's not part of your body. That's just saying, but it's like kind of like a hinge for the purpose of signaling. And when he says, but it's like saying, hey, listen, da, 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 da. but he's, say, he's literally signaling a contrast between here, believers in the natural, unbelievers, the natural man. The Greek word is suchikos, meaning uh, one whose mindset or behavior is natural, governed by purely human impulses, rather than by the Spirit. You see, the Bible speaks of understanding God's Word using the word spiritually, which refers to the help rendered by the Spirit to understand and really discern the real truth of the Scriptures. Now, verse 15, let's go on. It says this, the spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. I think you look at this, you say, I bet non-Christians look at this, say, you see, you Christians, you think you judge everyone else, and uh, you're not going to be judged yourself. Now, I want to give pause, because there's a lot of truth in that. But that's not what this scripture's saying. What this is saying, uh, by the way, is, is, is by, by judges all things, is actually the Greek word meaning appraises or praise, which is to make a decision based on careful investigation. So when Paul used the words spiritual, he means something very different from the, what the word, what the world called spiritual. You, know, you realize that we're more spiritual than we were in the 50s. There's just less depth of Christianity. The Christians then, in the 1950s, were much more 
read in the Bible and much more serious about their faith and living by their faith. So we have more spiritual people today than ever, a lot of new agers. But in general sense, Paul says of the word spiritual in verse 15, one who has or belongs to the Spirit. That's very different. It refers to every believer in contrast to unbelievers. The natural man, verse 14. So how this all ties together? Listen, having access, the ability to comprehend the spiritual truth related to Christ because of, you know, listen, the illuminating work of the Spirit for believers is key. And the Spirit does that. It illuminates truth. It helps us discern. But without that, we're really subject to what the world... You want to know why so many people believe fake news? Because they're unable to discern the truth. So when I say, you know, it's amazing to me over the last year or so, especially with the elections, to watch certain issues debated, and Christians will fall on a side where they're plain and simply unable to discern the truth. Uh, that's pretty sad. You could look at that and you say, how did you ever fall for this or believe that this is going to be true? I just believe that they were unable to discern the truth. Very religious people. I know a lot, a lot of people work full-time for Christian organizations, sometimes churches, read their Bible every day. But you know what? They're unable to discern the truth in many cases, according to culture. And that's what we're here to help you do. But you can only truly do that by getting in the Word of God morning, every day, daily, and being in prayer. But in summary, listen, the natural man or the natural person does not have the Spirit of God. That's the bottom line. In contrast to the Christian who does have the Spirit of God, Paul uses the word receive here, meaning to welcome, applying to the, it applies to the meaning of, of to life and to God. And that's the key. You accept God, you know what you get? God and you get life. You get love, you get light, you get discernment, you get wisdom, you get the whole package. I didn't say life's going to be easy because there's a responsibility with those, but that's what you get. And I hope that helps you better understand why these liberal churches are failing because they're filled with people who are failing in their faith. And quite often, it's not just them being misled as they want with their itching ears to hear what they hear or they would go to another church. That's, I hope if you know somebody, you'd be praying for them and maybe share this video with them. Listen, in closing, the article made the point to say that when we, that we use, that's them, when they use statistical analysis to determine which factors are influencing growth of the church, conservative Protestant theology, with its more literal taking of the Bible, and there's times where the, the Bible is to be taken metaphorical or through wisdom literature, it's, that it's not all literal, but literally to take the Word of God as the perfect Word of God, it's infallible, right? And in, in the inalienable Word of God, I mean, that's the bottom line, is is the inerrant Word of God. When we do that, that's different than taking it as just one big allegory. The liberal churches will take it as allegory. The whole Bible is allegory. So you say, did that really happen? Did no? listen, did Noah really build an ark? Well, that's just allegory, you know? Did Jonah get swallowed by a whale or a big fish? Well, that's just allegory. Did Jesus really die on the cross? Well, that's just allegory. That's pretty much what they're going to come up with. They may agree with some or none, but they will never really agree that all of them are true. Listen, you can't take which stories of the Bible you want. You can't take the sections or parts of the Bible, any parts. You take the Bible as the Word of God, or you don't. Different subject, but that's the bottom line. Listen, with more liberals taking on the Bible as such, this is creating a problem. And this is a significant predictor as to where the church is going. Listen, conversely, the analysis that they found showed that liberal theologians with their metaphorical reading of all Scripture leads to the decline, and their research stands out, they said, because studies have shown or suggested that theology and church growth are not linked. See, that's the, the adverse, what they were kind of answering. They said, listen, he goes on to say, as you might imagine, our results may be very well received in saying that, listen— Theology and how you look at them certainly does show result. In other words, with this between these two things, if two things going on here, the liberals are saying our church has grown because of our liberal theology, but the studies are showing that that churches with conservative, true understanding of contextual understanding of the scriptures and that are alive with the Holy Spirit, they're growing. And listen, so when you say what what we lose, if we could look at a hundred churches, say, well, look these. 
churches are closing. These churches are going to become liberal. Why is that? Well, just give it a little more time because the liberal churches, I'm telling you, eventually going to go out of business. That's the way it works because they're standing on something. They're standing on what? Shifting sand. They're not on solid ground, man. And so at the end of the day, liberal Christians have been a lot less satisfied. And that's always the case because if you come to get meat, and you keep getting just, you know, some old dried out string beans, eventually you're going to go do something else. Take that ride in the park. But in closing, let's recall the words of Apostle Paul speaking to the church in the old naughty and moral city of Corinth, much like our cities today in 2021. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 to 16, now listen carefully, Paul says this, the natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. This spiritual person judges all things, but is himself uh, not to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Yes, we aren't Christ, but we have the mind of Christ. So when Paul says the natural person, he's speaking again about the unsaved person. Verse 14, and in the end, Christians are, are like tea, right? The hotter the water, the better the flavors. And in the end, listen, we will end up with less churches in America. The church is fading. But the ones that remain, whether they're underground or, uh, or they're on the street corner, they're going to be more biblical and less cultural churches, right? They're going to be more authentic Christ-following churches as opposed to natural, you know, by the member, nature, by the means of men and women who are just natural or, or worldly. Those churches eventually are going to go away, I'm telling you. The church has to be—I'm not going to say they're going to go away altogether, but they're just going to pretty much, as a whole, you're going to see the church— in America, I believe, fade, because what's going to happen is most a lot of churches are going liberal and liberal theology, and then a lot of those, not all of them, will fade away, and it's going to look like the church as a whole is going to fade away. That's a false perception. A lot of people are going to start holding churches, listen, home churches, small groups underground. That has already started to happen. That is going to continue to grow. That's going to continue to happen. The church has already truly been discerning the things, a true church has been truly beginning to more and more discern the things of God as laid out by the Word of God, and nothing can change that. No laws, no fads, no government mandates can change the natural order of God's truth, which eventually separates the wheat from the chaff, raising up biblical churches, and then by the church, that doesn't have to be a big building or a building at all, and by embracing the Bible, and only the Bible, not as metaphor, Right, but understanding in its true context. Sometimes it's literature. Sometimes it's wisdom literature. Sometimes that song that we read is text. But listen, liberal churches leads only to its own demise, and it's why because it's, the church is not a club. Yeah, God made us all in the image, in His image. We've been returning to favor ever since, and I pray that you today will stay in the Word of God. Stay daily in prayer and continuously in prayer throughout the day. And if you seek God truly and diligently, the church will once again grow. I'm not speaking about buildings or about, listen, I'm talking about the true body of Christ, the true church. True church is not about how many buildings you have or how much money. It's about the true church, believers. We're either two or more gathered because only God's people can know and understand them. Hope that's uh, that truth has resonated with you today. Okay, gang, we listen. Hope that's going to help you. Hope that's going to encourage you. Beware of bad churches. Make sure you share this with those who perhaps are going to liberal churches. If they don't want to hear about it, check out our episode we just uploaded is when to stop sharing the gospel with other people. I know people say, well, I listen to this preacher. He's a, you listen, he's a preacher. He's a He's a preacher for the for the prosperity gospel or something. And we warn them, and we warn them again. And after a while, you don't warn them anymore. That's up to them. If they want to go down and believe that, it's they're going to pay the price. Let God deal with them. There's a limited. You want to check that out. So we just uploaded that episode. And also, you want to check the very just last episode, because that was last week. But the one we just uploaded was speaking to the trends of the liberal church. It was the one that kind of uh, came before this. Talks a little bit about the article and the church's failure. You don't want to miss that. I'd put a link to both of those below. Before you go, make sure that you leave your comments below and make sure that uh, if you want greater resources, you want to put on your calendar to check out EquippedAcademy.com in November. We're going to be rolling out 
a much more comprehensive program where you can connect with us. We can connect with you, perhaps teach you from near or from afar. And if you're listening on podcast, you listen, you want to do something. That's typically iTunes or Spreaker or Spotify. Make sure to give us five stars review in iTunes or wherever you're listening and make sure you subscribe. If you give us five stars, you know what's going to happen? The, the, these, the, the platforms go ahead and they go, hey, this is good. We're going to give them a little bit more playtime. The message, the word of God, the message of God makes it into more people's hands. So if you just rate this as high, five stars, you are going to help us spread the gospel. It costs nothing. If you're watching, by the way, a video is different. Don't forget to man, go ahead and smack that or smash that subscribe button below. It's right below. They'd give the old Gonzalo Sinistro, the Italian left hook, bam, that alert bell. Maria will come out. She'll say, what are you doing? Mm, let me give you something to eat. Just don't smack me anymore. No, we're not smacking you. We're smacking the alert bell. She goes, oh, okay. Well, they, Italians, they bring you food whether you need it or not. That's a beautiful thing. They bring you two things in Italy, love and food. Anyways, you know what that's about. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate you tuning in once again. I'll see you for the next episode of Reason for Truth. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo, and this is your Reason for Truth for today.